For several months now, there's been a number of videos on Dr. Brewer's YouTube channel in regards to continuous glucose monitoring. Uh, there was also discussion on that, and there were, in the videos, there happened to have been one questioning about continuous glucose monitoring. Is it really worth it? Do we actually get usable information that we can better manage our blood glucose with? I was very interested in that, and I also wanted to know the accuracy compared to the conventional method of glucose monitoring using lances and finger sticks. So we'll talk about that and share some experiences and some research. Before that, my name is John Lorscheider. I'm a patient of PredMed and a follower of Dr. Brewer's YouTube channel. Um, the Abbott Freestyle Libre Continuous Glucose Monitor came on the market in the United States back in January of this year. Prior to that, it had been available in Europe for the last several years. Uh, it went, was very popular. And the, the advantages of continuous glucose monitoring is you wear a sensor on your arm that stays there for 10 days um, and records your glucose readings during that 10 day period. And when you wanna see what it is, you just hold up your reader next to your sensor and it will give you a very accurate reading. But the accuracy never quite seemed to match what my Abbott freestyle light glucometer that I've used for years and is considered perhaps one of the most, if not the most accurate glucometer today. Uh, I understand people don't like to keep poking their fingers multiple times per day. And of course the test strips add up in a, a, to a substantial cost over the course of a month. So continuous glucose monitoring was very attractive to a lot of people. What you got with it? Some very nice data reports that you can generate on your own. Uh, it looks at your glucose levels throughout a 24 hour period. Uh, it looks for any abnormalities in there. These are hidden hypoglycemic events where I've gone well below my target value of 70 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, gives you an estimated A1C up here. Uh, I found that to be quite accurate against uh, typical lab values. Um, so the other day I set out on a little discovery mission. I went and took my glucose readings for a day and plotted them out on Abbott's website. I darkened the line here just so you could see a little better, but I maintained glucose values throughout that day pretty darn good. Uh, right here I dipped, I went hypoglycemic, went slightly above my, I think that might have been breakfast. I had an apple along in my smoothie, which well, I think the apple was a little too big. But uh, in research, what I found, I wanted to find out a couple of things. I wanted to find out how are these glucometers accuracies compared to one another and how do they actually measure accuracy? What I found was, it was a little surprising, but I'm in one respect that accuracy standards do not exist for glucometers. You can go and look at all the glucometers on the market. None of them had to meet an accuracy requirement. There was no standard. So you really, when you find out the accuracy, it's hit and miss. You, uh, sometimes you spend a little more, you get a little better accuracy. Um, my Abbott Freestyle Light, using the finger sticks, I can get accuracies of plus or minus 2%, which I think is very, very good. Um, and I've seen other glucometers out on the market that talk about plus and minus 50 milligrams per deciliter. Person has no idea what their blood sugar is when you use those devices. They tend to be very low cost. Uh, if you can get low cost and good accuracy, that's really great, but it, it's a lot of trial and error. But what manufacturers can do, and I think they all do this for the most part, they do wanna know what their accuracy level is. They may not want you to know, but they wanna know. And they use a method called mean absolute relative difference. 
And what that is, it's a very long and confusing algorithm. I still don't totally understand it. But what the moral of the story is, they took large population group, roughly 10,000 different blood samples from labs, and they compared it to using their glucometer. And what they came out with was a score. It was basically the absolute relative difference between the lab value that you would get when going to a lab and what that particular glucometer said. And there were some pretty wide variances, and we'll look at those. Uh, and the short version is if you have a high score, a high relative difference, you're going to get more false positives where your blood sugar is higher than it actually is, and you're going to get more false negatives where it is lower than it actually is. Um, the Journal of Science, the Journal of Diabetes and Science looked at this and they took the MARD score and compared it to a quantitative uh, scoring system by ISO. ISO is the International Standards Organization that looks at standardizing a lot of things, whether it be testing procedures or equipment uh, to operating standards within uh, businesses and uh, pharmaceutical companies and uh, manufacturers of all sorts of equipment. And um, this happens to be the ISO standards, 15197. Uh, was done in 2013. And they wrote this standard specifically for self-monitoring glucose systems. In other words, for people like us who just want to know what their blood glucose is and they want to know if it's accurate. So um, they went and they looked at this and they said they thought having false positives less than 10% or false negatives less than 5%, which is reasonable, you would want to have a MARD score. They actually tried to have a comparison between the MARD score and the ISO standard. And they said if you could come out below 7.5% MARD score, you could actually achieve some pretty good accuracy. They um, try to put this in a picture here for you. This is the MARD percentage down here. This happens to be a MARD, a MARD percentage of six. And they say they want to be in a 95% or better accuracy. So these numbers up here, these were actually comparing lab values to the glucometer. That's the ideal range to be in. But once you got further out here on the MARD score, like 11, 12, you found out as you go over here, the accuracy now may be 20%. It's not that good. So, the Abbott Freestyle Libre, how accurate is it? That was a very hard thing to find, but I found it on the Abbott Freestyle Libre website in Australia. This is not published in the United States website that I could find. If it's there, it's very well disguised. What they went on to say at Abbott in Australia, in a clinical study, the Freestyle Libre system achieved a 11.4% MARD score. If we go back to our little chart here, if I come out here to 11.4%, basically right around here where the clusters are, and brought it over, we would be somewhere in the 75 to 80% accuracy level. That's not particularly good. That way, when you go and you see your values on your Freestyle Libre, you basically aren't real sure what you're looking at. So with that information, I wanted to see what the high-end glucometers, like the Dexcom. I go on Dexcom's website in the UK, their MARD score is 8%. 
okay, it's better, but that's costing a couple thousand dollars per year to measure your blood glucose using that. Uh, you get lots and lots of information, but if it's not all that accurate, I'm not sure how useful that is. So I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer. I plotted my score. I took my Abbott Freestyle Libre, I gave it a blue line, the Libre does 24-7 monitoring. And I compared it to my Freestyle Light. So let's take a look at this. Right here, this is midnight. I had my Freestyle Libre on and I'm getting readings that go all over the board. I'm getting here down in the low 60s. Uh, I'm going up uh, at about four in the morning. I'm down here. I'm in the 40s and I get up here at six in the morning and I'm starting to see some actual correlation between where I started using my finger sticks and comparing it at the exact same time to my Libre. And what I see here is I'm in a pretty close tight band right here at eight that morning. I'm exactly the same. But then I go and have breakfast. I think this was Sunday morning. And I had breakfast a little late, got up late that day. Uh, and I'm starting to spread out here. I'm, now my Freestyle Libre is up here and I'm up at a, oh, about 115. But here's what happens. My Libre will stay up at a higher level but my actual blood glucose that's tested for in my freestyle light is significantly lower. And I see this pattern, although they're both in a decline after breakfast, what I'm seeing is there's a big difference. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I will tell you there is about a 25% variation in those glucose scores when my Libre is saying my blood glucose is at 100. My Freestyle Light is saying I'm down in the mid 70s. So that's a pretty significant difference. What is even more disconcerting, I'm getting up here at about 10 o'clock that night and I'm starting to see a crossover. Now my actual blood glucose that I'm still measuring before I go to bed is higher but my Libre is reading lower. And guess what? That's another 20 to 25% variation. So I'm not sure what I'm looking at right here. But what is interesting is this actually is what's to be expected according to Abbott. They're saying that you might see 11.4%. I've seen as much as 15 to 20 and reading other comments out on uh, Dr. Brewer's YouTube channel on continuous people are seeing upwards of 15 and 20 percent on a real regular basis. Sometimes they're 15 to 20 percent high, sometimes there's 15 to 20 percent below what the actual blood glucose level is. So I find that a little disconcerting. Um, so I've got two monitors here. I've got this one that I don't need finger sticks with, but I seriously question how accurate the data is. I have this one where I poke my finger, I get excellent accuracy readings. So which one will I use going forward? This one. And I'll pay a little more for my monthly finger sticks versus the Libre sensors, but I'm getting data that's very, very useful. So I hope this comparison was helpful. If you have questions or comments, please write below and we'll respond. Thank you very much.